Welcome to the Crystal Ray Network College Fair. We're excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Jessica and I'll be your facilitator. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items for you. Your camera and microphones are off, so know that the panelists cannot see or hear you. However, you can ask a question at any time by using the Q&A button on your screen. You can type your question to the presenters and they'll answer them. This is just one of the sessions that have happened for Chris Array. So please make sure you go and have a chance to go back and look at some of the recordings you may have missed um, at strivescan.com com forward slash crystal dash ray. So we're going to go ahead and get started and we're going to turn it over to St. Vincent College. Excellent. Thank you, Jessica, for the opportunity here to uh, present St. Vincent College and welcome everybody. My name is Brother Xavier. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at St. Vincent College, about an hour southeast of Pittsburgh. We're an excellent smaller school in Western Pennsylvania, about an hour southeast of Pittsburgh. And we are a community-based school. And I have a small presentation that I want to give to you all because I want you all to know St. Vincent because we are here for the student's best interest. And we want you to get to know St. Vincent more on a personal level. And we would love for you to, to attend because we do have a lot of different career paths. We have 50 different majors. And as a university partner school with Crystal Ray, we will cover uh, up to 85% of demonstrated need, which actually allows the cost of attendance to go down dramatically. So let me just share my screen here. And we're just going to jump to the website here just to give you a few pictures of St. Vincent. This demonstrates what St. Vincent is like. We're a community-based school. There's a lot of involvement at St. Vincent. Great small class sizes, about 20, 25 students. And we don't have any teaching assistants. We don't believe in them because they are not full professors. We believe in full professors at all times where our professors are there for your best interests. I'm going to switch to another uh, screen here. So I'm going to stop the screen share and then move to another one. I'm sorry to switch between screens, but let me just make sure that we all have an opportunity to see this wonderful PowerPoint presentation. But here is what St. Vincent looks like. It's a beautiful 200 acre campus, lots of green space, lots of nature trails, but we retain the familiarity and the first name basis of a school that is there for the student's best interest. And we have 50 different majors and programs, 98% success rate with students being hired into a grad school program. So very highly successful. And it's a beautiful, beautiful area of Western Pennsylvania. We have over 200 acres, lots of green space, lots of nature trails. This is a picture from our Winnie Palmer Nature Reserve. And um, we have a very good relationship with the local area. We're on a main road that leads all the way to Pittsburgh. And there are lots of eateries, lots of Starbucks's, Chick-fil-A's. Actually a brand new Chick-fil-A is going in on that same route in about a year, year and a half. We also have two Chipotle's within 10 minutes. Second one is in about 25 minutes away, but definitely within striking distance. So St. Vincent was founded in about 1846. So we've been around for a while, but we've always had the philosophy of a personalized education. As you can see on this PowerPoint slide, 11 to one student teacher ratio, lots of hands-on experiences, lots of internship opportunities. We also do have over 90% of our faculty that do have the highest degree in their field. For the sciences, it'll be a PhD. As well, for the fine arts, it'll be a master's degree. But we have over 50 different majors. So that gives you a great opportunity, number one, to know your professors. As well, you'll be able to really be a specialist in whatever, in whatever major that you decide to go into. So what do we look for in an applicant? And this is the basic application process is that we look for a common application or we have a free online application. We do accept transcripts via email and we are also a common app test optional school as well as our 
our application on our website, you do not need to submit test scores if you're not happy with them. We would look at your strength of schedule. We would look at if you have any APs or honors courses, and we have admitted a very broad range of student GPA. So for Crystal Ray schools, we've had a very strong relationship over the years and that gives you all a better chance of getting in. So we've accepted students with a broad range of GPA. High 2.0 is up through 4.0. So like a 2.7 on up through a 4.0 is relatively acceptable. Then also we look at what you do outside of class. We look at recommendation letters and an essay. So we look at the whole entire person because as a Catholic institution, we believe in every individual person's potential. So that's why we want to look, we want to take a look at your application and everything that makes you a unique student. So we look for four years of English, we look at three years of college prep math, two science courses, one lab, so like biology, chemistry, physics. We also look for one non-lab science, three years of a social science, two years of a foreign language but I've never run into a crystal race school that didn't have enough curriculum. It's always a very strong, wonderful college prep curriculum with that wonderful corporate internship. Don't worry about the SATs because if you do not want to submit your test scores, you don't need to. So this is our automatic scholarships. As long as you're admitted to St. Vincent, you're going to get an initial scholarship offer. And the initial scholarship offer is going to range from $17 to $29,000 per year. Yes, I did say that properly, actually, because of the fact that we want to recognize your high school achievement. So scholarships are automatic on your acceptance. So that means as long as you're admitted to St. Vincent, we're going to give you an initial scholarship package immediate with your acceptance letter. And then once you submit your FAFSA, we're going to take a look to see if there is a if there's a gap that needs to be bridged between what the government says you can afford and our total costs. And our total costs are about $53,000 a year this year. So don't let that sticker price fool you. We demonstrate 85% uh, of need we will cover. And that includes scholarships, grants, as well as the subsidized and unsubsidized loans. It does not include work study, which is actually a separate thing, which gives you up to about $2,300 for a federal work study program and we have over 700 jobs on campus. So we've been rated very, very well by Money Magazine, US News and World Report. And actually we have been rated, especially uh, this year, this is I think the 13th year in a row that we were actually rated as top tier liberal arts college by US News and World Report. College Factual actually ranked us in the top 5% of all the colleges nationwide and one of the top 10 best colleges in Pennsylvania well as we also were named one of the top 10 Catholic colleges, according to niche.com, as well as um, actually this last part of the slide, we just got the updated statistics for the class of 2020, and it's the exact, the exact same percentage. So 98% success rate with students being able to be hired or into a grad school program. So some of our more known majors, we do have 50 different majors, as I said before, but some of our more known majors are in the sciences. So we have biology, chemistry, physics, lots of pre-health professional programs, pre-physical therapy, occupational therapy, dentistry, optometry, as well as pre-med. We have a PA program. We also have a nursing program. So we have lots of opportunities for you to succeed in the sciences. And we also have 100% success rate with business. So management, marketing, finance, international business, accounting, sports management, sports marketing are two newest majors in that. We also have three majors in education. And all of these have great small class sizes with the 11 to one student teacher ratio. So classes start out with about maybe a couple classes here are gonna be 40 kids, but the average class size is under 20. We also do have pre-K through four, four through eight and nine through 12 in terms of education certifications. So if you're interested in education, we are a very strong school. Also psychology is one of our more known majors. Criminology is one of our more known majors. We also have minors in forensics. We have a crime lab 20 minutes away, as well as we do have lots of internship opportunities. 
We also have an engineering program, a four-year engineering program, as well as a 3-2 engineering agreement with Pitt, Penn State, and Catholic University. We also have a digital imaging lab, a nurse simulation lab, so lots of wonderful facilities, a $45 million science facility. We also have lots of study abroad opportunities. If there is a country that you want to go to and we don't have it in terms of an agreement, we will try to make it happen for you. And this is some pictures of places that people have gone. And if you go study abroad, then it costs the same as a St. Vincent semester or a year. We also have about this year's class is about 60% about athletic. So if there is any uh, interest in athletics, we do have 24 varsity sports for both men and women. And don't be surprised if your skill set athletically is actually going to be excellent for Division Three, because Division Three puts a little bit less emphasis on your athletic ability and puts more emphasis on you getting a degree and being successful in your career. So that's a wonderful opportunity because you get playing time plus on and off the field coaching, as well as we do have a turf field on site, as well as we have 50 different uh, clubs and organizations. We also have a Uniting All Peoples Club, which is great for students of all different backgrounds. We also do have a multicultural office and we have a brand new uh, graduate assistant who is trying to increase the diversity of our school because it is sitting at about 13, 15% diversity, which I wanted to be 100% honest with you all because I know that this is a question that usually comes up with Crystal Ray, but we are actively recruiting students from all backgrounds. We do not recruit based on race, we recruit based on fit. All right, we're just about a time, out of time. And that's uh, pretty much that all I had. I right, thank you so much. Thank you very much. So next we have Bentley University. Good afternoon. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen. Um, hopefully you see my screen. Um, my name is Mario Silva Rosa. I am the uh, Director of Undergraduate Admission at Bentley University. And um, it's a pleasure uh, to have this opportunity to be here and speak to all of you. Um, I, I had the opportunity to uh, interact with uh, other students at the um, earlier uh, uh, event, uh, early this, uh, this week, and uh, it was just great to be able to share some basic information and uh, answer uh, specific questions. Uh, just to give you an overview about Bentley, um, I would like to then uh, share this um, slide. It uh, encompasses pretty much uh, some of the essence of the institution. Uh, Bentley University is considered a mid-sized business university. Uh, we draw students from all over the world with diverse perspectives and interests in business. Um, we feel that today's our world is built on business and whatever field or industry you are choosing to uh, enter, I think that a background in business is a foundation that will serve you very well. Uh, so whether you wanna work with, uh, within government or nonprofit or fashion or uh, corporate or sustainability, uh, we, we have countless alum uh, or alumni that show how a business education prepare them for their careers. Um, Bentley is located in Waltham, Massachusetts. Um, it is an institution with uh, 4,200 students at the undergraduate level, shy of 4,200. Uh, and they come from specifically about 44 different states and over a hundred countries. 29% uh, of our students identify themselves as students of color. 15% um, of them are, are identify themselves as international students. And we benefit greatly, like I mentioned before, from the diversity that that population can bring to our, our community. In terms of um, academics, uh, to some extent, uh, the business core, uh, which is all the foundation areas in business, like management and marketing, 
um, accounting, economics, finance, etc. Um, I require for every student uh, to take once they come on our campus. It's a solid foundation. Um, the first year and a semester or so, um, your curriculum will be somewhat prescribed. And it's gonna be a combination of uh, business core and also what we call a liberal arts core, which covers kind of like the other side of the equation, um, information technology, math, uh, natural sciences, economics, but it's kind of like uh, part of the skill set um, that you have to develop uh, to um, be proficient in terms of public speaking, writing, and communication. I think that those are uh, skills that will be with you for the rest of your life. You're going to be retrained, retrained, but these are areas that you want to hone in on. And we recognize the the conversation, so to speak, between uh, the business area as well as the liberal arts uh, or the arts and science area. Students also are required to do group work. It's important for us, for students to be able to feel comfortable interacting, interacting with other people uh, in the place of business. So we do group work all four years. Bentley has about 26 majors and 37 minors. Therefore, there are some plenty of opportunities of options to choose from. Um, over half of our students, I will say, choose to study abroad. Uh, we have 80 different programs in 30 different countries. You could do a week long, you could do a semester, you could do a year, uh, you could do a summer, you could even do what is called an embedded. The embedded um, option is unique. Uh, it's a very unique feature uh, because the entire class it's able to participate in a short-term 10-day semester break abroad experience with the professor. Uh, a lot of these professors are well-connected. They have um, uh, interactions with a wide range of uh, companies in different sectors, and they just take the opportunity to bring in the entire class on a short-term um, break. Service learning is important to us. Uh, when we go through the uh, evaluation of the applications, we like to see uh, a balance between what you've done academically as well as what you've done outside of the classroom. So we want to keep things going on our end and have some continuity. So service learning remains a very popular component on our hands-on education with perhaps over a thousand students participating each year. Uh, students can apply what they learn in the classroom uh, to community service activities and earn a course credit for it. So some of these programs certainly are pretty straightforward, typical mentoring and tutoring, uh, but we also have computer assistance, uh, tax preparation for the elderly, especially uh, English as a second language, working with nonprofits to de develop kind of like market plans or business strategies. So the uh, opportunities are endless and it allows you, again, like I mentioned, to apply what you're learning in the classroom and become a little bit more practical. All students are encouraged to participate in uh, a wide range of uh, high-tech labs or high-tech uh, um, learning labs on our campus. And uh, they are a great way for students to engage with industry tools. Among them, we have like, for example, a media and culture lab, we have a computer information system, Sandbox. Uh, we have um, LEAF, uh, which is the lab for economic uh, accounting and finance. Uh, we have a language lab. We also have one of our top labs that is very renowned is the trading uh, room. The trading room, it's probably the most impressive one. Um, it has 24 Bloomberg terminals, which is used in the industry. It's the largest university training room in the country. Uh, so students can trade, trade on stock, uh, utilize analytical tools, databases to make real-time decisions. So, um, and even some, some of those students partake in a club that is called Bentley uh, Investment Group, which is responsible for investing in some of our endowment. They were given about 250,000 10 years ago and it started growing and it's more than $1.5 million today. 
So I think that there's plenty of opportunities for students to take full advantage of what we have to offer. We have an ex extensive uh, corporate partnerships. We take um, that very seriously. And this allows the students to get some great opportunities for research and development. Um, we work with like uh, places like Lenovo, Converse, Mazda, Fidelity, Home Depot, ESPN, Biogen, Liberty Mutual, TripAdvisor, et cetera. So I think that that gives you the breadth of the options available. You can start internships right away. Most of our students went on to the summer of the sophomore and junior years or during the junior year. The most popular locations, of course, will be Boston, New York City, Silicon Valley on the West Coast. Uh, but you can also do internships abroad. Uh, U.S. News and World Report ranks us number one in the North uh, region. The Princeton Review uh, ranks us number one in the nation for undergraduate career services. And what makes our career services different in the fact that we are um, very proactive and start working with students during their first year. Uh, we have a seminar that students take during the second semester of their freshman year, it's called CDI 101. Um, and students have a career advisor that is specific to a specific industry of major. And we have career fairs that take place in the fall and the spring. We have over 150 companies uh, that come on campus to recruit our students. 92% um, of our students complete at least one internship before they graduate. 80, they're not required, but most of them do. 85% uh, are paid and about 45% of them result in job offers. So uh, there's a great return on investment uh, when it comes to not only that almost guarantee, and we have one of the highest rates in the country in terms of job placement at 98%. And the average salary tends to hover around 62% uh, each year. 10 miles away uh, uh, west of the city of Boston, uh, you don't need a car, we have a shuttle, kind of like the best of both worlds. So we're really excited to host students all over the place and they guarantee that they have the opportunity um, to take full advantage of what we have to offer. So I'll leave it there. Thank you so much. So next up we have University of Massachusetts Lowell. All right, thank you. Um, it's of course, get myself situated here and we will jump right in. All right, so um, hello, uh, my name is Thomas Frenchy. I am one of the assistant directors of undergraduate admissions uh, here at UMass Lowell. A um, little bit about me, I did attend UMass Lowell. I graduated in 2010 with a degree in history. Um, I was very involved in campus, so my presentation and my you know, uh, times I talk about the university can be a little bit biased, so, so I'll try to stay as neutral as I can, but um, I was involved in residence life, a bunch of student jobs, uh, including tour guide orientation leader, um, I was even the mascot for three years, which is just a great job. Um, definitely a, a unique college opportunity to, to do that. So um, uh, with any further ado talking about myself, let me jump into um, talking about email. So here you can see the aerial shot of the university. Um, I always kind of jump ahead and then jump right back. Um, just pointing out where we are located, our location in terms of New England, and a little bit about the city of Lowell. Um, you can see from that map, we are about 35 minutes north of Boston. Um, Lowell truly is like in the center of that little star there. So um, we're about you know, one town away, honestly, from New Hampshire. So um, whether you like cities or you, like, you don't like people and you wanna be out in the woods hiking or you know, maybe at the beach or surfing or stuff like that, we are 35 minutes to literally everything. Um, so that's definitely a huge plus about the location. Um, I live in Lowell now and partly um, because I love the, the area Lowell is nearby. Um, as a student, you're obviously near Boston, near um, the, you're in the middle really of the like, very developed uh, Eastern Massachusetts. So there's a ton of opportunity um, within your majors, within related fields, within just fields of interest um, to go and work off campus. And as a research school, um, there's a lot of that. Um, going back to this map here, you can see where I'm situated um, within the city of Lowell. Um, East campus right up front is where most of the residence halls, most of the uh, dorms would be located. Um, if you kind of just went right off of the screen to the left over here, um, it really kind of just cuts off where downtown Lowell is. So if you live on East campus, you are about a five, 10 minute walk to the heart of the city. Um, and then other, other uh, side of downtown was a train station which goes into Boston and other places from there, of course. Um, so you're in a fantastic part uh, of the state and a fantastic part of the city of Lowell. Um, North Campus across the river is about a five minute walk from east. Looks 
pretty bad in this picture, but as someone who's done it for over a decade, I can guarantee you it's like five, seven minute walk. North Campus houses all the engineering, all the science, all the business majors in South Campus, which is only about a half a mile, you know, three quarters of a mile maybe uh, from East Campus, South Campus, where you have all the humanities, social sciences, health sciences. Uh, I was a history major, like I said, all of my classes were on South. I literally had all my classes, but three of my whole four years um, on South Campus. So every major is definitely focused on either North or South, which is great, makes the school feel small, even though we are division one, you know, 11,400 uh, uh, student school. Um, so again, we're, we're, where we are with the city of Law and kind of a fantastic place to be. Um, getting to the, the school itself um, in admission, we can see some of the, the biggest numbers um, and the averages we're typically looking for in terms of SAT and GPA. Um, I always have the points are right here. It's you know the, the right spot to point out that UMass Lowell is a test optional school. Um, we were one of the first, if not the first public school in New England to go test optional. So we have been doing it for six, I think coming on seven years now. So we truly don't care if you apply without the SATs. Um, if you do apply with the SAT or ACT, you can see the averages here. Um, I typically recommend to students who are applying for UMass Lowell um, that you should really at a minimum have an 1100, 1150 um, or higher. Um, GPA 3.6 is if we're look, looking for in terms of our average scale. And you can see some of the bigger numbers you typically see, um, or people would ask about rather on this little um, picture here on the left-hand side, in terms of financial aid, community service, division with sports, all that kind of good stuff. Um, we do offer 120 programs of study. These are the different uh, colleges that, that those majors are going to be within. Um, fine arts, humanities, and social sciences, like my major history, some very large popular majors like political science, excuse me, um, psychology, criminal justice. Political science is still popular, but not, not huge by any means. Um, Francis College Engineering is probably what we're most known for we, as a research school and as a, as a STEM school, really. Engineering and the sciences are very, very strong. Um, tons and tons of lab space. Uh, mechanical engineering alone has 22,000 square feet of lab space. So it's a very big program, engineering um, for UMass Lowell. Same with the sciences. Uh, business always popular as well as the health sciences for those interested in nursing. Um, physical therapy, maybe that's a very pop, popular track as well. Um, there is no major in honors. It's like an honors, uh, like an honors program, really, on a lot of steroids, as I like to say. Um, but the honors college is open to all majors. And we do offer a lot of um, accelerated programs, which would be a five-year um, bachelor's and master's degree. So these are all of our uh, bachelor's degrees here. I don't expect you to read them all. It might be a little small for you, depending on your screen. Um, but you can see there are quite a variety of programs of study and a lot of master's and doctoral programs as well. We keep our classes small, around 20 students on average. You can see the student to teacher ratio being 17 to one. Um, so even as a bigger research school, you have a lot of time for individual attention. I made tons of great connections with professors that I still hold to this day, even though I've been graduated for a long time. So the professors are definitely there um, to help you and to get to know you. Um, so definitely make those connections. It can be a huge step into hands-on learning. Um, your professors are, you know, very good chance working in their field, researching in their field. Um, I believe around 90% of faculty have the highest degree in their field, and like 99% are still working in their field. So they're a huge leg into the um, hands-on learning that we do offer that we really you know, strongly encourage for every program, whether it be a co-op or an internship, uh, one of the 300 study abroad programs, um, or doing clinical or practicum experiences. Um, you do have a lot of opportunity to do that. If you wanted to give back, a service learning project is a really cool opportunity. It's a way for you to help someone in need um, while also learning for your major and providing a service. So um, that's definitely a really cool program. Difference Makers is kind of like the Shark Tank. If you've ever seen that show um, on UMass Lowell's campus, students get to compete for funding for project ideas, product ideas, the services they want to offer um, as a business, basically. Um, so that's open to everybody um, and usually teams of students go into that. Our campus life is always booming, always growing. When I was a senior back in 2010, there were about 120 clubs. Now there's over 300 clubs and organizations that we do offer um, across the university. Um, Division one sports are free for every student, very, very popular to attend. Um, hockey, basketball games, however, I have to, I have to of course say field hockey, soccer um, are always very, very strong teams and baseball too. So always teams worth going to see too. Um, we do offer housing all four years. It is typically guaranteed. However, with COVID, we are uh, having restrictions on housing, so we can't guarantee it this year. And, um, we will see for the future, but housing is typically guaranteed and uh, we do offer it all four years. We also offer themed living and learning communities, basically themed housing communities for you that can be focused around an interest or a major students have. Um, one of the most popular living and learning communities is called HEAL. 
it's an acronym, but it's basically for health, um, education, and um, related major students. So um, that's a very, very strong and popular one, but there are on, um, over 20 of them right now. So um, definitely something you can get into. A lot of food on campus and being in a city, being um, low, low being low and being near Boston as well, you have a ton of opportunity for great food off campus in addition to on campus. Um, on campus food is always gonna have a variety and for all sorts of diets and restrictions you may have for your diet and eating. Um, but then off campus too, if you wanna explore the city and explore the, you know, the town you're in, um, well, has a ton of food from you know, all different parts of the world. So you're gonna have a lot of opportunity to try um, different great foods off campus. We have a fantastic uh, music program with, which comes with 50 bands and ensembles. So those open to all students across the university. So if, even if you were just some random student in engineering and you don't do music and you just love the trumpet and you wanna be part of a band, you can definitely audition and be part of them. Same with our theater productions. Um, as a student, you're going to be part of this for the fun of it. You don't have to be a theater you know, major student at all. Um, so lastly, getting to admissions deadlines here, all pretty self-explanatory. Um, I always have to point out that for nursing students, um, if you're a thick of nursing, you have to apply early action on November 5th. Um, we do not request, um, accept applications for nursing for any other deadline just because nursing is so competitive. Um, but I recommend everyone apply early action. It makes you look good to school, makes you seem highly interested in us. So it kind of makes us all feel special as colleges. So we always love students who apply early. So um, definitely make your, to flatter us as a college and make yourself look good by applying early. We also offer early action two in January and regular decision February 5th. Um, if you're looking for a scholarship money, I always recommend applying earlier. The earlier you apply, the more money schools have to work with to give away to students naturally, because the first, if you apply early, then of course you haven't get, given anything away. So um, definitely start in October for the FAFSA to get uh, financial aid if you are looking for that. And we are a member of the Common App and Coalition application. Uh, we do offer in-person and virtual tours and open houses this year. So you can come see us virtually or in person. Um, classes are fully on person, uh, on person, in person on campus this year. So please come to campus um, and visit us. You can see the link there at the bottom. And before I uh, run out of time, just thank you. My name is Tom and have a great day. All right, thank you. Um, so next we have Trinity Washington University. All right, thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm just gonna share my screen here. All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shani Barahona. I am an admissions counselor here at Trinity Washington University. I am also an alum. So I graduated from Trinity with my bachelor's in criminal justice. So if you have any questions at the end of this, please feel free to ask. So we are an all women's university, a uh, private university. We are located in the heart of DC. We are very committed um, to the education of women. Um, just a little bit about Trinity. We were founded in 1897 by the Sisters of Notre Dame de Namur. During this time period, there weren't any schools in the Washington DC area that offered education you know, for women. So the sisters decided you know, to fight and that's how Trinity came to be. Um, I was very uh, proud to meet some of, uh, you know, the other sisters from the Sisters of Notre Dame and more. We are, uh, like I said before, we were the first college for women in the Washington DC area. And because we are in DC, there's so many things that you can do. It's the city life. So students have so many options an abundant of options uh, of activities to do, but also to expand their education. Our class sizes are relatively very small. We have 15 students to every one professor. Uh, we like to like to focus on our students' education uh, and we wanna make sure that our young ladies are educated and you know are also learning about how to be a leader in this world. We do have programs of study. We have 20 plus programs of study. Nursing being one of our top majors at Trinity, we have a lot of nursing students who are interested in that career field, but because we are also in the heart of DC, right, we're near Capitol Hill, the White House, um, and all these Smithsonian museums, our students are very also interested in criminal justice, political science, global affairs, international affairs, right? Because students, you know, at Trinity, we emphasize a lot about changing uh, not within, you know, just the United States, but making a change globally, right? And taking what you've learned from Trinity to the outside world. So these are some of our degree programs that we have at Trinity. We also have minors and students are more than welcome to minor 
and um, major at the same time or double major. These are just some pictures just showing you some of our science degree programs. As you can see, one of the pictures on the left-hand side is, just, is our nursing simulation room, uh, part of our nursing school where our students, once they have entered into the nursing program, that is where they'll start their education. Um, about 90% of our students pass the NCLEX exam. Last year, we had 100% of our students pass the nursing um, exam. And of course, we offer preparation for that before you graduate. So that way you are able to be successful in your career field. We are also proud, you know, proud for our students um, and are also able to work with nearby hospitals. So a big portion of our students do have a job right after graduation. Just a few things about applying to Trinity. We um, are part of the Common App, but we also have our own application, which is completely free. So you're more than welcome to apply to either one. Um, we do need your official high school transcript. It's very important for us to see how you've done overall during your uh, course of high school years. We also require your personal statement. I cannot emphasize enough. Essays are truly very important. It, go, it goes to show uh, to the university that you know you are a unique applicant, but also gives us a little bit of perspective as to the type of student that you are and the type of person. Uh, we also, you know, we also need one letter of recommendation. But students usually submit more than more than two letters of recommendation. The more the merrier is what I say. Um, we are a test optional school. So you do not have to submit your test scores. Um, you know, that's not our main focus. So you're more than welcome to submit if you, that, if you want that or not. And of course, for our international students, we do have um, a requirement for them to take a test of English just to make sure that uh, they're able to comprehend the education that they are receiving at Trinity. Of course, we do offer scholarships at Trinity. Um, every scholarship is different, but a big portion of our students do receive uh, financial aid from Trinity. We do offer the leadership scholarship, which can range from eight to 15,000, and that is renewable every single year um, for four years, as long as you maintain uh, the required GPA for that particular scholarship. And as always, you know, you're more than welcome to apply to other scholarships, you know, don't get to tier just because, you know, you only see one particular scholarship that you won't be able to receive another one. No, um, there are many, many scholarships that you can apply for. Uh, Trinity offers various of them, and we work with students very closely so they are able to understand the, their financial portion. Um, of course, this is where you can contact us. But before I end my presentation a little bit uh, more, we do have clubs on campus. You know, uh, a lot of our students use that opportunity because they are in DC to make a difference uh, because, you know, you know, Trinity is a Catholic university um, and it was founded by the Sisters of Notre Dame. So they are always, you know, up and going and making a difference, uh, going to marches because we are in DC. Uh, participating in community service um, and so forth. So if you are one of those students and want to become part of the sisterhood, I do suggest uh, that you look into Trinity and learn more um, about our different programs. Thank you. All right. Well, I would love to have all of our um, panelists to come back to the screen. So turn your screen on. We have a few questions that we're going to um, answer in a panel style. Um, and so as we go through these questions, we're just going to answer them in the same order that we presented. So the first question I have for you is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Well, I would say pick a college based upon who you are. If you're a small group person, don't go, don't look at bigger colleges. If you are a student who is of a religious background, if you are Catholic, if you're not Catholic, um, if religion is important to you, seek out that type of school, as well as if you're looking for a particular major and you are fairly certain with that, don't look at the schools that don't have that. So also um, look at the schools that are gonna be, um, that want you 
and especially the schools that search out that search you out because they will want you more. It's a two-way street with college admissions where if the school is searching you out, they really want you. But also take to heart the idea that if they're contacting you, sure, they want you, but certainly consider the fact, do you really want to go to that school? And do not uh, turn your back on yourself. Be true to yourself in searching through for a college that fits you. Because if you go to a school based upon any one factor and you um, don't follow that gut instinct, um, it may not uh, end too well. So a couple of pieces of advice that I've discovered through the college admissions process. Uh, from my end, I think that um, one of the key elements that, well, two of them, uh, one of them will be um, uh, the ability for you to think critically about where you would like to be, how do you see yourself um, in the future in terms of potential career or areas of careers. Um, and I think that that's going to allow you to get a better understanding as to um, which institutions you might want to gravitate towards and explore a little bit. Uh, having said that, I think that um, it will be important for you, for you to be well organized, um, have a spreadsheet of sorts. Uh, I'm big on, on spreadsheets, have a spreadsheet of sorts where you can actually uh, keep track of the essential information that you deem important in your search, but also the questions that you will specifically like to ask institutions. That would be one. The number two will be more about once you have done that and have a sense, I think that is important for you to visit any school that you may be interested in. And I'm gonna qualify that statement because uh, when you think about visit, uh, more often than not, let's say you are looking at schools far away from you, uh, you may think that you actually need to physically be there. And I think that technology and COVID has allowed us to ramp things up on our end to make it easier for you to have some sort of an experience. Most of the students that apply to Bentley um, don't have the opportunity to come to campus and they make decisions uh, based on a variety of inter interactions. So I really urge you to seriously interact with schools um, that you may be interested in. Yeah, um, uh, Mara kind of started to say what, what I was going to say, which was you know, being organized. Um, I think, you know, whether there's a spreadsheet where there's a, a you know, a folder on your computer um, or an email address, um, just to keep yourself organized. I think um, visiting the email address idea is a good one. We sometimes get some pretty poorly, you know, named email addresses sent to us and which we have to read. So um, maybe, you know, make a new email address or have one you like that's appropriate. Um, and just kind of see that as your college email. So, you know, that's where everything's going to. Um, so make sure that's a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, that's my piece of advice. All right. Well, everybody uh, summed it up very nicely. But um, just to add a little key piece, um, I always tell my students um, where do they see themselves growing as a person, as a student, as an individual, right? Is it is it a small campus? Is it a bigger campus? Is it a co-ed campus? Um, is it a religious school and so forth? So those are, everybody summed up very nicely, but those are very key important things. Um, growing, you're going to see yourself grow. So it's important to um, know where, um, what school you're going to see yourself become successful uh, while you're there and then after you graduate. Awesome, we have one more minute left. So this is gonna be a quick answer and then we'll wrap up our session. Um, what is the one thing you want students to remember about your school? Quick answer. Uh, so at least for Trinity, we are all about the sisterhood. Um, we're a very community-based uh, school. So Trinity, it might be small. Sometimes students don't know that Trinity does exist. But we are very, very uh, focused on educating women and making them part of our sisterhood, knowing that they have someone there. Um, to help them in every step of their college process, but also their education.
as an alum of UMass Lowell, I, I love the area. And I think that's one thing is to come experience the school in a tour and be part of the city of Lowell and the school. Um, and it always really impresses a lot of people. It's what really kind of kept me here and moved me here um, and bought a house and everything. So um, I would say um, the city and area of Lowell. Um, for Bentley, uh, be a force for change, be a force for good. And for St. Vincent, as um, a smaller school, we are very much community oriented. And um, honestly, you're never gonna find a place that's more caring. Uh, our faculty are extremely, they'll take the time to get to know you by first name. They'll take the time to make sure that you're getting what you need. And honestly, we recruit students. We don't have students come to us. We go after the students that fit very, very well. And it shows that we really care. We really want the students here. And as a, as a monk, uh, I actually make it my part of my goal to interact with students on a daily basis. We have movie nights. We have a lot of campus ministry events. We have uh, events that are open to the whole entire campus. And I honestly, uh, I care about you as an individual and I want you to get the best education. And um, I, I don't mind if we do not agree on things. It would be a very boring place if you had a carbon copy of everybody that agreed with you and had the same exact experiences. So that's what college is all about. Go to a school that you feel challenged, but you also feel comfortable enough to be yourself and I really truly believe that you can be yourself here at St. Vincent. And I think you'll love it here. Great. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, when you close the window, there'll be a quick five question survey. Please give us your feedback. Uh, so this session and other sessions recordings will be found at strivescan.com forward slash crystal dash Ray. Thank you so much. Have a good day.